Hi everyone, uh, my name is Paul and I'll be talking about Telegram as a C2 today and um, what we can do as defenders to kind of defend against it and get some information about the threat actors that are using it. So a bit about myself, I currently live in London. Um, I've had several roles in threat intel over the years and I currently work as a threat researcher outside of my other job. Um, so the outline for this talk will start with a short explanation about the Telegram bot API. How, it's, how it works, what it's used for, how threat actors use it, and how we can use it as well. Then we'll give a short demonstration on um, Eurotrooper, which is an APT uh, that uses this technique to, in their tool set, and um, we can, we'll show kind of how to um, retrieve this data as researchers from the victims that they infected. And then we're gonna get, go into three different uh, case studies. Uh, each of them used Telegram as a C2 in their in their campaigns, which are Neonet, Darkpink, and Ducktail. So if you're gonna take one thing away from this talk, it's that it's, um, that you should block api.telegram.org because it's honestly a very harmful domain. It can be used for a lot of bad. Um, so yeah, just block it in your company's environments. So why is this domain so dangerous? Basically, this domain is related to the Telegram bot API, which is used to um, you can create your own bots in Telegram to kind of enhance the functionality of a normal Telegram chat. So you can just um, converse with these bots like a normal person, but they, of course, they're automated. They can send you images. They can send you different information. And they've been used by major APTs, such as Darkpink and Eurotrooper, which we'll talk about in a bit. And um, they also regularly use it in e-crime. For example, the um, agent tester uses it to exfiltrate uh, victim data. It's also used by the Matrix Keylogger as well. And um, the way it, it works is that normally the victim data is exported to a Telegram chat, and then in the same chat you can also just send commands that are then um, read by the malware and executed. So this is, like right now, this is the current threat landscape. Basically everyone's using it as a C2, from nation state to random e-crime actors. It's quite popular, and it's not looking like it's gonna be less in the, in the coming years as well. Um, so this is going to be the, the demonstration, so just a bit of background. Um, on the left side would be a victim machine, and on the right side is the attacker's telegram chat. So in this case, we're going to use a PowerShell backdoor used by the Eurotrooper APT, which is an um, APT based in Kazakhstan. They were discovered in, I think, in 2023 by Cisco Talos, and they, they were targeting um, government and military in former CIS countries. So just... So quickly to look at the, how the backdoor looks, um, you can see the Telegram bot ID at the top left. You get this when you create a bot and it has to be used in every conversation. Then we can see this call to get updates, which is a bot API method. And we also see some uh, comments in the Uzbek language. Um, we see the slash CMD command that is specified that uh, you can use as an attacker, which uh, calls invoke expression. So it just executes the argument. We also have a second command that is in this backdoor, um, slash download, which basically just exfiltrates whichever file uh, that you want from the, from the victim machine. So now we just um, execute this PowerShell backdoor on the victim machine. Normally this would be launched by a series of droppers uh, before this. But we can now uh, type slash CMD and then any command we want to uh, use, for example, who am I to get some information about the victim device. We can also get some information about the directories and the um, network configuration of the victim device. And um, yeah, so basically we have con complete control over this victim device just from our Telegram chat. And then if you want to exfiltrate a document like confidential or PDF, we just type slash download and then it gets transmitted in this case, it's just a threat advisory about your trooper. So how does this work? Basically, it's a REST API that's exposed, and you always need to, like, this is kind of the setup you need. So first, you have the Telegram bot API domain, of course, then the bot token you get when you create a bot. So normally, you should keep this secret, as anyone that has this token can kind of take over your bot. So you should, if, if you're like a normal developer, you, you keep this uh, token secret. Then this is followed by the method, which in this case is sent message, which sends a message to a Telegram chat. 
And then we specify the parameters, chat ID for the chat we want to send the text to, and then the text simply uh, as the content of the message. So in, in case of memory, this would be extracted data, for example. There's a few further methods which we can work with in the Telegram bot API. There's getme, which gives you basic information about the bot. There's getchat administrators, which, uh, does, which, yeah, which just gives you information about the admins of a particular chat. Uh, same with getchat members count. You can get more information about a particular chat you want to investigate. And then the most important one for us as researchers is probably get updates, as it gives you a list of messages that a bot has seen in the past 24 hours, so like all the messages that it has received, you can just look at. And um, that's, uh, that's also basically how Threat Actors implement C2. They use this, uh, this API method to retrieve the, mess the messages they send to their bot in Telegram. So how do we exploit this exfiltration? So we can basically use this get updates call to retrieve uh, the latest messages. However, this only retrieves, yeah, as I said, the messages from 24 hours before. So we can kind of just monitor this, this continuously to get always the new messages. But if you want to get older messages from before, we can use another method which is called forward message and which I will demonstrate in the next video. So just um, a bit of explanation again, this would be the researcher's machine. So uh, both sides are the researcher's machine. Um, the researcher got the bot ID from the uh, PowerShell backdoor, basically from VirusTotal or from uh, wherever it was found, and then using that bot ID, you can then continue our investigation. So I saved the bot ID here in an environment variable, so the commands are a bit shorter. Um, yeah, this is from the PowerShell backdoor used by Eurotrooper. We can then use, first of all, the getme uh, method to get some information about this bot. Um, so in this case, this returns stuff such as the username of the bot, the, uh, the first name, which is Eurotrooper demo. It returns some basic information as well, such as permissions and other stuff. Then we're going to use the get updates method to retrieve, to retrieve the latest messages seen by this bot. So we can simply execute this. Uh, it gives you like a lot of messages. If we just focus on one in particular, you can see that these messages contain, first of all, the message ID, um, as well as the user that sent it. So in this case, the user is called Triglios. And then um, it also contains the date as well as the text, so the content of the message, which is, which is um, slash cmd dot there, which we, which we saw earlier in the chat. If we want more information about this chat in particular, we can copy the chat ID and then um, use the get chat method to get more, more data on it, uh, simply by specifying the chat ID as an, as an argument to the, this method. Uh, you can see here, it also retrieves the, the first name of the chat. In this case, it's a, a private chat, so it's only with one person. Um, it also retrieves the uh, profile picture of this user, as well as several other information. And then if we wanna, now, uh, now we're gonna use the forward message method. So the way it works is we need to specify a from chat ID, which is the chat we wanna get the message from. So in this case, <clears throat> this is the chat that we, well, the, the threat actors chat. And we specify a chat ID that, that would be our chat, so on the right. You can retrieve this using different uh, methods. And then we specify a message ID which simply starts at zero and goes up sequentially to uh, whichever the latest message is. And then if we execute this, you can see at the right that it simply forward us, forwards us the message from the other chat that we saw earlier. So in this case, it's the result of the IP config call. We can also send the next message, which was the slash download command and then the, the PDF. So we can kind of establish a timeline of activity using this way. Um, I'm going to pause the video now just for the end. Yeah, so um, we can kind of establish a timeline of the infection using this way. And um, the last message you see is basically just a um, reference to the next part because it just should show you that every message sent in a Telegram chat with the bot is not actually private. Like you can, if you have the, the bot ID, you can retrieve it. So. And I think most threat actors don't know that yet, so that's why they make these mistakes. Um, if you want to do this, of course, like faster and at scale, you can um, 
like the, the short script at the bottom basically just exfiltrates every message from zero to 200, so the first 200 messages to your own chat. Um, you can also use a public GitHub repo that does it for you, but you simply have to provide the bot ID and then it does everything um, for you. Now the first case will be Neonet. Um, Neonet is a threat actor targeting mostly banking users in Spain and uh, South America. So in total, during his campaigns, there were over 350,000 euros that were stolen from victims' bank accounts. Um, and he also compromised the uh, personal information of thousands of victims over his two-year-long campaign, I think, in total. So the affected banks were mostly Santander, BBVA, but also other banks in other countries, such as uh, Deutsche Bank and Credit Agricole in France. Um, his campaign was mostly based on his software as a service offering, which included um, Android versions as well as a smishing as a service infrastructure, and also um, a few dedicated phishing panels that he was selling to his affiliates as well. So the campaign started with simple SMS phishing messages. They were um, targeted towards their victims, of course, so they used um, short codes impersonating, in this case, Spanish banks like Ibercaja or Santander, and they included fake domains and um, phishing links to these phishing pages that would then um, kind of impersonate these, these actual um, banking login, login portals. And then they also had, of course, a sense of urgency. So in this case, uh, the messages read that an unauthorized device has accessed uh, your account online. And then um, once the actors had access to this account, they, of course, needed to circumvent MFA in most cases. So they would also distribute Android versions as well to get uh, to the OTP codes um, in the SMS messages. So this would look like this. Basically, all the Android versions were based on the publicly available SMS I Trojan. You can just get it from GitHub. It's quite easy, not, nothing complicated. Um, all it does is retrieve incoming SMS messages and send them to a Telegram chat, nothing more. So it's quite uh, good for circumventing MFA over SMS in this case. So you can see the call to uh, the Telegram API. Um, in this case, it's using the send message method, and then it's sending the text um, attention and new devices online to the um, actors chat. So well, th this was, of course, used to exfiltrate the OTPs to kind of circumvent MFA. Um, we saw them using this in uh, different cases. So they were using it to transfer money to their own accounts. They were also using it to authorize um, ATM withdrawals and as well as online payments. So you can see on the left a few of these um, exfiltrated messages. So at the top, you can see they were authorizing a purchase of 24,000 euros. I think they were, it was a website that was selling watches in this case. So who is behind this, this whole campaign? Um, so the person is called Neonat. You can see his Telegram profile on the left. Um, from the description, you can see that he's not really, not really shy about his accomplishments. He's really proud of what he's done. Um, he's selling dedicated phishing panels to his affiliates, um, targeting mostly Spanish banks, as well as the Android Trojans and the um, Anchorex smishing as a service um, setup that you can use to send these phishing SMS messages. And he was also selling um, vetted leads as well. So how was he, like, what was his big OPSEC mistake? Basically, he was, first of all, the Android apps he was um, selling simply had his name in the main activity name, so quite obvious. And he was also selling, uh, sending these test messages once he was setting up the Telegram chats. So at the, at the left corner, top left corner, you can see one of these test messages that he sent from um, a Android uh, emulator in this case, which is the SDK G phone model. And he was simply sending a uh, test Del Neo to test if the Android Trojan works. And um, we also saw him um, kind of explain to his affiliates how to use the setup. So at the right side, you, um, he's saying, now open the app again and um, that it's working. So yeah, and um, his main issue was he was testing the Android Trojans on his personal devices, which exposed his IP address because we saw one IP address across multiple chats across like multiple months in the same area in he was actually based in Mexico and um, yeah he was also uh, revealing at the same time his, his phone model which was also linked to the IP address across uh, the different chats and he was sending pictures of his um, personal phone to the public Anchorex uh, telegram channel which you can see on the left 
where he was demonstrating the functionality of AnchorX by sending a message from BBVA saying, saying Dios que hermoso eres, which means um, God, how beautiful you are. Now, I don't know about you, but normally my bank doesn't say me that I'm beautiful, but maybe he's special, who knows. Okay, we'll talk a bit about Dark Pink now. So Dark Pink is a APT um, discovered in December 2022, I think, by uh, Group IB. They were targeting mostly uh, Southeast Asian governments and military organizations, but also a few in Europe as well. And um, they had a like, quite advanced toolkit, but the main thing which we focus on today is the PowerShell and .NET backdoor because they, it was using Telegram as a C2 again to receive commands and to exfiltrate data. Uh, they're still active as I'm, the last um, time I've seen them was in February 2024, targeting, I think it was an organization based somewhere in Southeast Asia as well. Um, and in this example, we're gonna use a government organization in Indonesia which was compromised by them. So we'll kind of see hands-on activity that, that they were doing during this um, infection and what they were doing on the network of this government organization. So basically the backdoor worked in a way that you could send um, CMD commands through the Telegram bot. So at the bottom left, you see uh, the, um, the threat actor Wang Toa um, simply specify, first of all, the infected device, which is desktop E1, and then specify the command they want to send to this device, so in this case, net user. And then the, the Telegram bot simply replies with the answer that uh, results from the execution of this command. Uh, the tool was also used for Chrome user data exfiltration, so they were collecting uh, saved passwords, cookies from the victim device, and sending them to the Telegram chat, which you can see at the bottom right corner. And um, at the top right corner, you can see some of uh, some other commands they were using. So they were using PowerShell to mm -hmm. simply um, download new tools they were staging for later use. So in this case, they downloaded a file underscore three dot doc file that they were then saving in the temp environment. Um, once they had downloaded this this further stage, they were then using. Um, they were querying the registry to find out, first of all, where MS build tools is, which is a living of the, line, living of the land binary, which you can use for execution. And then they were using that to execute the previously downloaded um, file using MS build. And then they also used this for exfiltration as well. So in this case, they used um, the upload file method to send uh, collected victim data to a webhook site. Um, the main OPSEC mistake they made beside kind of exposing all of their victims to the public, if you would just look, was that they um, use a few different language codes. Um, so basically when you call get updates, you get some information on received messages and most importantly, you get information on the sender of that message. So in this case, we can see the first message was sent by uh, Wang Toa with a English language code, while the second one was sent with a Vietnamese language code. We saw these different language codes across uh, multiple messages, so it's possible that either there were two actors accessing this uh, one Telegram account, or maybe that um, Wang Toa had his, or I don't know, the person that was behind this had Telegram installed in, in, on multiple devices that had different, um, different languages set in their settings. Now, this is, of course, not enough to um, attribute it to Vietnam. Like, there needs to be more information, but maybe it's a little hint if something in the future comes, more, comes out about this uh, threat actor. Now the last case would be Ducktail, and we'll talk about um, a bit more about what they do. So Ducktail is an uh, info stealer. They were discovered in June 2022 by WizSecure. Uh, the info stealer targets mostly Facebook business and ads accounts, but also um, exfiltrates other stuff, such as uh, browser cookies and saved passwords. Um, the way Ducktail works is that um, once it infects the machine, it will collect all this data, stage it in a file, compress it in a zip file, and then send it out uh, using a Telegram bot. Um, but I think at some point in 2023, they updated this, and they included screenshots to it, which basically is quite dangerous for us because as we know, they always infect their own devices to test it, which they did in this case as well. So we just have screenshots from their own devices over a couple months. <laughs> um, so the following few slides will just be screenshots from the um, actor's devices kind of exploring what goes on behind the scenes of, of DuckTale. 
and then what they were doing. And in this case, uh, the, this particular group of doctors, because there's, like, there's multiple subgroups, but this group was consisting of three people, uh, two operators, and one developer, which was providing the operators with the compiled malware. So this is from an operator's device. You can see it's a Telegram chat, um, and they're talking with a person called uh, Hyoi Code, and they're sending over, this person is sending over the uh, zip files containing the ducktail malware. So these zip files were then used by the operators in um, fake LinkedIn job adverts. So once a person would reply to these job adverts, they would converse with them, and then after a bit, they would send over these, these uh, zip files. And inside these zip files, there would be, uh, first of all, fake images to kind of get, distract the user from the actual malware, and then there would be um, yeah, a fake Word document and a fake PDF um, document, which actually, uh, I think in this case, they were simply .exe files, but in other cases, they were .lnk files, which would then, which would then launch the ducktail malware. Once the malware was launched, um, it would exfiltrate the um, Facebook account details, Facebook business account details, and then the actors could simply log into this victim's Facebook, uh, Facebook business account. In this case, they were logging into the Facebook ads um, part of it and then setting up their own ads campaign, which they would use to promote their own Shopify business selling uh, magic drawing pens. But apparently, so I have, I've talked with more people about this, apparently, um, when a victim would buy this, these magic drawing pens, they wouldn't actually send it, they would just collect the money. Um, they were also selling the accounts to other victims, uh, to other threat actors as well, so that's kind of what they were using with the compromised accounts. Um, and then after they've done this, they, they used to play some league as well, so this is from one of the operator's screen uh, devices as well. <laughs> now this is from the uh, developer's device. So this is basically the first screenshot we see. In this case, you can see them using a uh, C-sharp online sandbox to kind of test their code. Um, they were experimenting with um, some screenshot capturing code. They would then be exfiltrated over Telegram. So this is, that's why this is the first screenshot we see as well. Um, like every developer, they also have issues that they need to fix. They use Stack Overflow as well, which you can see here. They were looking for a solution for the uh, screenshot functionality that they wanted to implement. And then finally, we can see, this is a screenshot from the source code of DuckTale. So uh, the, the list of emails you see is basically uh, what gets registered as account owners once DuckTale infects a Facebook business account. But the important part here is at the bottom right. Um, I'll zoom in now. Basically, that's... The, the person's name behind, uh, the developer's name, because you remember the Huey Code person, so that's this person, so kind of, he's kind of revealing his name through this. And then there was another mention of this name, linked to an email as well, and linked to a birth date. So we got a email plus name plus birth date simply from analyzing Telegram as a C2. So that's how powerful this tool can be, depending on the on the OPSEC, of course, of threat actors. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this talk and I hope you can use this, these steps too in the future. Okay, we have some time, for, yeah. Talking about abusing the APIs and uh, to get information, do the bad guys actually get to see what you've done, especially if you, say, did the uh, forward chat thing? Yeah, so if you use the forward chat thing, if they check out updates, they would see that. But if you use the um, GitHub repo links, um, that one works in a different way, and they actually can't see that, that you did this. So it's more secret in a way. Yeah, so you've got to be careful not to tell the bad yeah. guys that you're looking into them. That's the thing, so, yeah. Okay, another question. Don't be shy. So you mentioned finding the name of the person behind the malware several times. Uh, was it caught, actually? Um, so, I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about this, but um, 
I talked with a few people that were also sending this information to the police, so I don't know where that is at yet, but apparently they sent it to the authorities, so hopefully it's being investigated right now. Okay. No more questions, you sure? Okay, thank you very much.